Okay, so what we're going to learn how to do today is how to draw threads in AutoCAD. We're going to look at each method, the pictorial, the schematic, and the simplified. We're going to do the pictorial first. For each of our examples, we're going to use the same thread, and that's going to be a three-quarter inch major diameter coarse thread, which is going to give us 10 threads per inch. Now we need to know, in order to draw this, we need to know the pitch because we'll have to offset those lines. And our pitch is going to be 1 over the threads per inch, which in our case is going to be 0.1. So I'm going to begin by going ahead to the offset command. And I'm going to offset this very first line, which represents where the beginning of my threads are going to be, over a couple of times 0.1. Now, I only really need to do a couple of times because I'm going to draw a few threads, copy them across, and then copy them down. So there's really no need to go ahead and do this all the way across. The next step that we need to do is we're going to focus up here on the top of the thread. And we're going to draw some lines at angles. Now, the threads are going to be angled down 30 degrees from vertical. Now we need to remember what the angles are in this case. We have to follow the Cartesian coordinate system. This is going to represent 0 degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees. This is 270 degrees. So since we're working from 270, we have to add and subtract 30 from that. So I'm going to go line. The first line I'm going to draw, I'm going to start here. And I'm going to go ahead and use the less than uh, key to signal that I want to type in a line. Now the first line I'm going to type in is going to be 300 degrees. And I'm just going to indicate there. And I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> and draw another line starting from this point. I'm going to use my less than key. And this angle is going to be 240 degrees. Now I'm going to make sure that they cross. I'll hit escape and what I'll have to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my trim command. Select all, enter, just to clean up those extra pieces of the line. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this across and I'm going to go all the way across. Actually, I'll, I'll go all the way across. Um, <clears throat> I'll go over four times and then I'll copy that all the way across to be a little bit faster that way. So I'll go to copy, and I'll use a window to select those two objects. Specify my base point is right here. Go across, go across, go across. Okay, now with this, I can really take this and go all the way across here. It would be much faster if I copy these four all the way across rather than doing them one at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and go copy. I'm going to select all of the angled lines that I just drew. This will be my base point. And you can see this is much faster than doing it one at a time. Okay, and that, that ended nicely at that corner. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to copy all of these angled lines straight down. I'm not going to mirror them. If I did that, it would not be correct. So I'm going to copy them and move them down. However, I need to give them a point to go to. So I'm going to have to draw an extra line. I'm going to have to go through this first point right here where these two go together. I'm going to have to draw a line straight down where I hit the other side of the major diameter. I'm going to need this point to move that geometry to. So I'm going to go to copy again. I'm going to select all of the angled lines that are on the top, hit enter to end my selection. Then I'm going to use this as my starting point and drag down to my ending point and hit escape. Now it did copy the uh, top line with it. Okay, so what I can do now is I can erase some lines just to clean this up. And I don't really need these vertical lines anymore. So I can get rid of all of these. And I can get rid of this one too. It didn't take, so I'm going to go back and do it again. And 
and it deleted everything for me. Now I kept this line because that's the ending of my head and the start of my thread. I can go back and trim this as well just to clean that up. And we are good to go. Now the last step for the pictorial is to go ahead and draw the angled lines to represent the threads. So I'm going to go to the line tool and I'm going to go, I'm always going to start from the upper left and go down to the right. That's the standard way of doing this for a um, right hand thread. I'm going to start at this valley, go here, and I'm going to draw a couple of these. I'm not going to go all the way across because I can copy and paste these. I can go from peak to peak. Okay, you can see that that's really starting to look like a normal thread. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and copy these. I can select all these lines individually. My base point will be here. And then I can basically do these all the way across. And you can really see it taking shape now. It looks like an actual thread. It really looks nice. Escape. Now this last line, I'm going to go ahead and erase. Since I don't need that. And I'm going to actually have to go back and draw one more line starting here, going back up to there. And we are finished drawing the pictorial thread. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move down to drawing the schematic thread. The schematic thread, I've got an extra set of lines here. Okay. Now what we need to, to do to draw this is we need to know uh, the pitch. Again, we already know that, point 0.1. And we also need to know another piece of information. We need to know the minor diameter. So what we're going to do here is you can get that measurement up here from basically this point down to this point. And I've already gone ahead and measured that, and that's 0 .5768. 5, 7, um, if you wanted to do that, you can go check that. So my first step is I'm going to offset the line, um, offset this line over my pitch dimension, which is 0.1. It's already set to that. I'm going to go over a couple of times. And the next step I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and offset. I'm going to create a center line for myself. Now my offset, my center line, is half of 3 quarters, which is 0 0.375. And that'll be here. And then what I also need to do is I need to offset these uh, I'll, I'll start off with offsetting the center line up half of the minor diameter and the other way half of the minor diameter below. Now if I go ahead with my calculator and I find out that half of my minor diameter is 0.2884. So that's going to be the next thing I offset. Offset 0.2884. I'm going to offset this up. Offset this down. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to offset a line halfway between these two pitch lines. Now our pitch was 0.1. Half of 0.1 is going to be 0 0.05. So I'm going to offset this. 0 0.05. And I'm going to offset that over. I'll do the same thing here. The same thing here. Now this might look a little confusing, so it's, that's why I recommend only doing a couple of teeth. That way you can copy those all the way across. We'll have to go ahead and do some trimming. Select all. And I'll have to be very careful. I'm just going to do every other long line here. Like so. The next step is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase, do some cleaning up here and here. And then I can just copy these, this geometry all the way across. Okay. 
there's my base point. I can go all the way across. And you can see I went past, so I'm just going to have to go ahead and erase that there. And this is the what my schematic thread should look like. I'll have to clean up my center line, and really these minor diameter lines here should really be a little bit thicker, but we can go back and change that with our layers. The last uh, type of thread is going to be simplified. This is much simpler. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off by offsetting half of my, um, my major diameter to get a center line. So 0 0.375. And then I'm going to offset this half of my minor diameter, which is 2884. Now all I'll need to do here is just change these lines to hidden lines. So I can select these two lines. Last thing I'll need to do is to change these two lines to hidden lines. So what I can do is I can just select these and I should already have a layer set up for hidden lines. I can just go ahead and click that. I can also change this to a center line if I'd like to. Now really, I need to extend this line as well, just to make it look a little bit more presentable. And that's it.